Haiku. A haiku by me. Pocket cast, podcast. Let the revelry begin. Fletcher didn't play. Thank you, Ed. It was beautiful. Thank you. I appreciate the warm reception. I will now share mine. Oh, please. Missing. A haiku by Fletcher. My DS now lost. Oh. Awaiting package arrival with piracy card. <laughs> oh, fuck. It feels so good to be high class. It does. I, I really feel like I it unlocked an inner side of myself I didn't know while writing that. <laughs> yeah, dude. I got spectacles on now in my head. Oh, and you can... on your brain. On my brain. Yeah. Dude, nice. My brain is Your brain short-sighted. has glasses. God, that would hurt, dude. Imagine like getting a pressure headache oh. with glasses on between your brain and the inside of your skull. I think about what if you just hit your head. Oh, game over. <laughs> like you wouldn't even have to hit it hard, dude. Like you could have just gotten a wrong answer on a test and like caught like a like a fucking index finger flick to the dome, and you'd just be like, <laughs> "Night's out." Glass to the Night's glass out. to the brain. Glass. No, oh, Jesus. I mean, like, at least, like, some acrylic lenses. Isn't that a thing? Acrylic in your brain. Ah, all right. Still Touché. breaks. Yeah, it's still. Don't worry. You don't have brain still damage. Terrible. You're just listening to Pocket Cast. I'm Fletcher. This is Ed. Yeah. We can be reached on Instagram as well as at gmail.com under Pocket Cast Podcast at Gmail. I believe our Instagram is pocket space cast exclamation exclamation mark. Yeah. Uh, just one. I just I fucked up. That's okay. Yeah. We'll fix it. Yeah. Yeah. We always do. <laughs> <laughs> we pay our editors very well here. If you couldn't tell by the haiku or the title, mm. we are covering Okami Dem. Okami Dem. And this is our second. Uh, recording of this actually uh, full prosperity, mm. but prosperity. not not, not just our second attempt at prosperity recording the intro. is not the word. It could be for prosperity. No, for posterity. Posterity is that the word? Yeah. There we go. Yeah. Yep. The uh, it's for the betterment of our children's posture. <laughs> Dude, everything is you know, as a father. Let's get into this. Man, it sucks having gone to massage school. Oh no! And having a kid. And just mm-hmm. seeing the ways in which they sleep or, like, get comfy. Dude, they sleep like a fucking forgotten about towel. <laughs> That's a really good, yeah. <laughs> just, like, they just crumple, bro. <laughs> just crumple They're just, like, like I'm to done. the side, yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. Or in the fucking car seat. Oh That's god, and they're just like their fucking their chin is like touching the opposite Can you side. Imagine nipple. how your neck would feel if you woke up from your chin touching your sternum god, dude, for an hour. Uh, yes, because I feel like I'd done that recently, and then I'm just like kind of looking to the side for like a week until my <laughs> body's like, okay, we well, can go back now. See, that's the way that it, that ruins that school ruins you is that uh, it's a. Um, it's forever in your head then, right? Once you've had bad, po- like once you've had this good posture, yeah. having bad posture, then you're like, oh, I've got bad posture. Oh, I'm, I feel I'm like that's just this. life in general, though. Does everyone become aware of it? That's good. I'm yeah. glad not to I'm, I mean, I think it just in things like, or just in regards to like, you finally do something or make some good decisions and you start seeing like, okay, this is effort, but then here are the benefits I was blind to that are incredible like how why would i ever stop doing this work to achieve this result this is this is so much better and you know and then six months later you're like i hate myself (laughs) (laughs) fucking pandora's box man why did i ever have to Uh, yeah so the moral to this episode is fuck new year's resolutions you don't need to start working out you're gonna stop in six months anyway just grab that twinkie and a box of oreos Go to town. Hit the fucking bottle. Hit yeah, hit the bottle. <laughs> Jesus, we're gonna really let yourself go. So that way you can come back and be like, look what I came back from. And really, you're nowhere near better than where you were when you started, but you're better than you were at the bottom. Amen. So it looks like progress. Progress. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And honestly, like once once you give those around you a little bit of tangible like hope for your betterment 
you can ride that for a good minute. Like, just start gaslighting the shit out of your friends and family, and, like, you can ride that out for at least half of 2024. <laughs> at least. And, and then, then we start the cycle over. Like, yeah. you know, like, refuse to sign the divorce papers, promise you'll get better, start. Well, I mean, at that point, you have to hit another new low. Mm. Um, Crack because then otherwise, you're going to actually have to improve for next year's New Year's resolution. Well, that's the great thing about the Silk Road. Is that every year there can be a new, darker, worse thing that you're doing? We're we just plugging. Um... <laughs> we do. We got sponsored by the Anonymous Silk Road. Digital <laughs> Drug Procurement. Hey, we'll take whatever sponsor we can get. Yeah, shout out Silk Road. We're done with this shit. We're selling out. Yeah, fully sold out. We now have two four minute ad spots. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. It's a wealthy percentage of our total airtime. It is. It's, it's really made things percentage. a lot easier. We're getting subsidized, and we don't have to edit as much. On that note, we've got an ad yeah. coming in. Uh, Ed's going to read for you. Oh, you fuck. Um, <laughs> Dollar Shave Club. <laughs> It's honestly though. a good fit for anyone in your life that needs to remove hair from their body. Not me. Could be a could be a mother, could be a father, could I'm be, a fucking could be an aunt, could be If I remove hair, the hair just comes back. What have you got for me, Dollar Shave Club? I've got a recurring delivery schedule that is suited to meet your needs at a budget that won't break the bank. <sighs> for just 38 cents a year. You too could have up to 15 razors delivered to your door every other day. <laughs> like, <Bob. laughs> uh, um, I don't remember what the other like minute of the ad was, so I'm just gonna like make elevator music with my mouth. Let's hear it. Welcome it just back. goes on like that <laughs> for a little bit longer. Welcome back from our ad break. Yeah. Thanks for staying tuned with us. Hashtag as we not become. a real sponsor. <laughs> <laughs> People are like, this is bullshit. They're not even they don't even get paid and there's still ads. <laughs> we just really like Dollar Shave Club. I've never used them before, but I hear other ads about them. You know, I think I have used Dollar Shave Club because I think they've taken over Walmart as well. Is it Dollar? I thought Harry's was the big one at Walmart now. I think you also get Dollar Shave Club, though. Maybe you can. I don't remember. I did use Harry's for a while, but I've been using safety razors for a long time. He's edgy. <laughs> it's not edgy. It's, I mean, it's, they're pretty sharp blades. No, but yeah, the, the, yeah, yeah. It's, okay, good, good. It's a single good edge. Good sharp edge joke. It's a one sharp edge. It's two sharp edges. Oh, it's two? So they're double sided, yeah. Scary. No, I mean, I would say there's a there is a learning curve. I think it's not crazy. It's not like a straight razor. That shit sketch as fuck. Um, I would like to do that one day, but uh, I would. I have no desire. I mean, like, just bro, like watching somebody in an old fucking movie. I mean, a film. I think is what they called them back then. <laughs> In the films, you see somebody shaving with a straight razor, and the shit's like, and I'm like, fuck yeah, dude, I want to do that or accidentally kill myself trying. Um, not not right now. It sounds like a lot of work, but like maybe maybe someday, or like I'll pay somebody like see, I guess way my too fear much isn't money. Even like killing myself with it, it's more of just like how fucked up my face is. Good. Like because I remember I think using your razor once. And yeah. just destroy my yeah, face. You have to go slow. Uh, like to, until like you can't let the razor slide and you need to kinda keep an even I bet that's why my beard angle? is patchy to this day. Bro, I'm not gonna lie, I fucked up my lips so bad last weekend. <laughs> like because like I, I like I don't I don't grow. Like you're looking at this. You don't this is like four days. It's pretty bad. But it's not it doesn't it, there's nothing promising about it, right? Well, I just got like 37 different very 
thick hairs that come in in the wrong spots and they're a bitch and i have to like treat them with care so i have to like warm up the pores get this get the hairs soft you know open everything up um and so like i usually shave immediately after a nice hot shower right and then i have to shave down and then i can shave up if i try to shave up just right off the rip uh uh-huh, go fuck yourself i will i will fucking slice my shit to i ribbons. think that's a lot of people that, that makes me feel a little better I don't think I ever shave up. I mean, yeah. maybe under my neck a little bit. I also haven't shaved in a while. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. I've got a, I've got a pretty like it's been at least beard. two or three days for you. It's definitely been multiple months. Yeah, that's fair. So, I got a baby face, much like our protagonist in the in the game Okami Den, which which I played. <laughs> And it was pretty good. <laughs> I played a little bit of it. Yeah, that's true. And then I did. So because this is our second recording, mm. we had already chosen a game, right? Yeah. And then I, um, I, I decided to download Okami Den on the Switch, uh, oh. the HD remake. Not yeah. Okami Den, sorry. Okami. Okami. Okay. Right. Yeah. And that was going to be my follow-up question, by the way. It was like, holy shit, I didn't know they remade Okami. Yeah, no, Dinsen just Okami. <laughs> just, just Okami. And I started playing it, and instantly I was like, I don't want to play this. Because, I guess let's just get straight into this. I don't dislike Okami Din. Okay. That's not the reason I didn't play it. Sure. You know, like I'd lost my DS and my cart and all this yeah, shit. Your shit's broken. So, yeah, your shit's fucked. Yeah, so... Uh, I have gotten all the things now. Like we are good to go for our next recording. Oh, I am yeah. playing the game. Uh, I wanted to play Okami. I thought, you know, I, this is a Zelda esque game. Yeah, as we discussed. I like Okami. Then, sure. I don't like Okami. Really? Because of the transitioning. Let's come back to this, all right? Because <laughs> okay. I feel like we should discuss the game a little bit. Okay. Uh, for people that don't know about Okami or Okami Den. Sure. Before I just jump into describing Before you just situation. start absolutely shitting all over it? Well, and be- because it's confusing what I'm about to say without any context. So. All right, that's fair. I will wait until we have this all out so that I can finally hear what bullshit you have to say about why you didn't like it. <laughs> I can wait. Yeah, absolutely. I like Okami Den. I enjoy Okami Den. I've got nothing bad to say about Okami. What's your total playtime between the two? <laughs> uh, between the is two? Is it at least an hour on each? Five. Minutes? No. Hours. Hours. Combined? Individually? Combined. All right. Is it, is, it a, is it like a 50-50 split? No. It's much more time in Okami than in Okami Den. Fuck. All right. All right. All right. Start your spiel, little fucking devil man. So Okami Den... And Okami are games in a Japanese art style of the like heavy brushwork, I guess is what you would call it. Yeah, like, like watercolor, watercolor yeah. brushwork. And you play as a dog. In Okami Den, you play as a big, or as Oka- in Okami, you play as a big dog. Yeah. In Okami Den, you play as that dog's puppy. And you're still a cute Basically, little yeah. puppy. Yeah, puppy version, little chibi guy. This is the cutest fucking. They're so cute. Yeah, everybody. That's first like... thing that Okami Den has over Okami, Okami the Okami protagonist. Din. Oh, just how cute they are. And yeah, shit? yeah, yeah. Okami Den wins that one hands down. It's okay. So straight up, like I'm just gonna come out and say it. This is, it's is so it's a Zelda game. Right, it's like that. If like if you don't know what Zelda is, we're not gonna re-explain <laughs> everything about what a Zelda title incorporates. And and I am talking um, more specifically like some of the O O O R G or Zelda titles. Era. Not yeah, not yeah. Uh, like the you know the dungeon, not crawler because that's that's its own thing. But anyway, not Tears of the Kingdom or Breath of the Wild. Um, that's. A whole other box of bananas. But anyway, it's a Zelda game with Japanese watercolor styling. And the protagonist is a dog who, if I remember right, I think is the, like the embodiment of the sun god, Amaratsu. I believe sun god, yes. Yeah. And then basically Okami Den, which is like a spiritual, spiritual successor, yes. is essentially the same fucking game. But everybody, like everybody that you're interacting with, or like everyone that is... 
I guess more involved in the gameplay, not just the game itself, but the gameplay are all like the children of characters from Okami. And so there's a lot of them are still present or mentioned or you know heavily involved in the story, but aren't like active participants because all the adults are busy doing adult shit. So yeah. the kids got to save the day. It is cute. It's cute as shit. That can't be your only reason. No. Okay. So um, you then have um, this game goes where you have like an attack, your basic mm-hmm. attack. Um, I think a dodge, maybe. I don't think so. I yeah. Think. No. There. There's like a. It's more like a twirl or something, but yeah, it's like a it's it's a dodge of sorts. So very quickly you get put into a battle, and it shows that there's like a circle. There's like a light circle that comes up around you. Yeah, kind of keeps you enclosed. In like uh, yeah, a it arena. separates the fight from the the rest of the, the world and what's going on. Mm-hmm. This happens in Okami. This happens in Okami. Then this, yeah. like the everything about this game. It's such a it's a great translation from a console game to a handheld game. Yeah, it's done really it's well. Very accurate, very true to the original. Yeah. Um, this is where the game loses me. Okay. In Okamiden, you so when you're fighting, you have an ability to use your paintbrush because being a god that mm-hmm. paints the stars or whatever, you know, like. You have this brush that can interact with the world around you. You push L or R, and it pauses your screen, and you can paint on that screen. Yeah. So um, in Okami, that transition is not smooth. Oh, is it not? And it's not the, the transition to the paintbrush. Right. So that's it's not the smoothest transition. Okay. In Okami, then you obviously have your stylist do the, the painting. Yep. In the the Okami, you have a controller. You can't use the you can't touch on the well. I guess if you're not using if you're not holding the switch. Right. Okay. So and that's, that's and I'm fair. also talking Okami on the PS2. Uh, Okami sure. On original the release, yeah. Or whatever that's right. else it released on, you know. Um, in Okami, then though. It, it doesn't bother me at all. But it, what it still bothers me in either game is the separating the battle from the rest like of the, the world. Like the overworld. Going on. Why did you have to do that? Yeah. Well, I, I don't get it. I just, so you run into a single mob in the overworld that represents a fight of multiples, presumably. Right. Sure. And so I get it that maybe it's a tactic to preserve resources and having to... Like, because if they're fighting on the overworld, you could still go through some kind of cutaway transition and then spawn in more mobs for the battle sequence. Um, I just don't like it. No, I don't disagree with you because, really... like, Zelda does it, and it's and there, so you don't have any of these transitions. You don't have any of these breaks between exploration and combat. And if you do, it's within a dungeon, and you yeah. don't realize it's happening because you're locked into a room. I, yeah, right. I, but it's yeah, not a constant. True. It's not every time you go into battle. True. Hyrule, Hyrule but feels every like shit's time all over the you place. go into battle, it just, you know, and, and, and then there's a ranking on it. It just it. Yeah, you have to wait for like the pulls match away. summary. It yeah, do, it does. You know, it pulls you out. It's no different than like a turn based where you go into a battle and then it's just the overworld is 3D instead of top down 2D. Yeah, I agree, but it's it's in a different realm when you're playing an rpg right like you're sure. used to everything being chopped up more yeah Whereas, like, no in I, that I hear live, you live not live action but like in a <laughs> action rpg kind of game yeah you're really expecting that flow to stay consistent and, yeah no I, I i really don't disagree with you and and while combat is kind of a big thing it's also kind of not okay so maybe i hadn't gotten that far well and i only say that because you're not fighting a lot of things all the time. Like, so like even in the first dungeon, I feel like there might've been a couple of, of fight sequences. Um, not a whole heck of a lot. It wasn't like all the time. So I guess at least for me, it didn't really bother me that much. And I didn't feel so much broken immersion per se, I suppose. Um, I didn't even get to the first dungeon. In that's Tommy did. Oh, you didn't even make it to the dungeon? No, I don't think so. Oh, damn. Okay. In Okami, I have gotten past the first dungeon. Okay, yeah. You know, but in Okami Din, and it's been a while since I got through that dungeon, so I'm not 
totally fresh on. Well, that's fair. It. And I haven't played Okami in in so long. I like there's so much of this. I mean, like there like a lot of the named places are the same. A lot of the characters are the same. So I I recognized a lot of those elements. Um, and I like like maybe a two sentence summary of the overall storyline, right? Right. Uh, goddess equal captured slash hurt slash restrained in some way and now flowers are gone good power bad or good power low bad power big um, (laughs) safe princess you do not have to chop the words down no (laughs) one asked you to do a low word count (laughs) yeah i was like i could maybe give two two sentences or Or 15 15 three word sentences (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> oh man! Yeah, that's, that's so. That's the game. Yeah, <laughs> uh, but you're not there just for the story. You're there for no, the storytelling. No, and I you feel like the saying? rest of the game is really good too. Like the characters are really fun. The, the, like dialogue, I honestly think is really funny. Um, and like there's there's a lot of what I would consider to be more Asian specific cultural. I think you say things. Japanese. Japanese. I think I don't it's... know that there's explicitly Japanese. I, I I don't know enough to say one or the other. It wouldn't surprise me. It wouldn't surprise. Given me. that it's a and yeah, whatever. I'll say it. But yeah, the there's a lot for everyone. Like, and it wasn't like I have. I don't know why this is funny or I don't understand this. Like, it all made sense. But it's just it's just good. I think and it's fun. You know, um, I when I was loading up Okami, something dawned on me. Because mm-hmm. Okami and Okami, that they're both published by the same company. Yeah. Capcom. Yes. This is Capcom's Legend of Zelda. And that's uh. why there's things like ranking your battle score at the end of... That's a, such mm, a it is. Capcom thing. Yeah, you get like your your mission evaluation, like your mission rating, like A for yeah. like top tier S. Yes, you know, yeah, S exactly, yeah, yeah, shit like that. Yeah. yeah, once I saw Capcom, I was just like, wow, yeah, it, makes that some, it makes some sense. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that explains a few things. I so I don't, I definitely don't disagree with you. If there's a world where we can get an Okami game that is more seamless throughout here for it yeah like on, like i don't care how shameless you want to be like just rip off the zelda formula in in totality and i'm fine with that um because they're already very damn similar like yes the, your celestial brush is your ocarina or your yeah you wand, said that whatever blew me away. yeah uh, oh my god yeah it makes so much sense because like you have some of your abilities that are you purely utility in nature and used for Changing the time of day, oh, yeah, bringing yeah, the sun right. out, uh, healing an item or causing a, a flower yeah. to bloom. Um, and, and so there's a lot of puzzle elements incorporated heavily throughout. And so it kind of gate locks a lot of sections based on if you've, you know, whether or not you've acquired a certain ability things. or whatever. Um, and so that's pretty cool. Like even like even as you first, at like the very, very, very beginning of the game, you watch a cutscene, you come out of the thing and you jump down when you first get control of your character. And there's like, I think it's a flower pod, and then there was one other thing, and I can't remember what it is, because um, you end up going back, to, you back, you know, back travel, little Castlevania type stuff yep. going on. Yep. Love that. Um, but like when you jump down off that ledge, you you immediately realize I can't get back up there. Right. Um, that's too high. And then you can try to like you try to interact with the flower, and your little homie's like. You don't. Get yeah, the fuck out of here. Right. You don't know what to yeah, do with that. Yeah, fuck yeah, off. Funny. Yeah, you're like, oh, shit. And then I actually just made it far enough in my playthrough um, to get to the point where you can – It's called, I think it's called Bloom. And you can – you, you, Make like, the plants yeah, grow. Yeah. yeah. And so, like, the flower – like, oh. And it's basically a Deku – pod flower pod thing uh, from like majora's mask i remember like the deku scrub could like Wait, you... worm his way in and then he would pop out as a flower and like yeah and you fly slowly float around yeah, yeah. kind of reminded me of that only it was more like the magic beans because you plant it and then it grows and then you step on it and then it like follows a track and it will take right. you somewhere but <clears throat> uh damn love zelda yeah i honestly loved Okami was that so? Was that really the big thing? Was that kind of like splitting up the gameplay? Yeah, just really taking you out of the yeah. The that's zone? really yeah. that's too bad. And, but I'm gonna say with with Okami Din, it flows way better than it does in Okami. 
and I think that's it is probably, very snappy. Yeah, you know, it's take it's it's a it's a fan project. It's a it's a spiritual successor. So it's they had to imagine they took some of the things from Okami that didn't go so great because Okami was kind yeah. of a flop. And yeah, so there had to be some negative reviews. Drastically overshadowed by to, so many other things. Was that what it was? Because I didn't look into why it flopped. I, I, didn't, I didn't check any old reviews on it, but. I mean, so the reviews, like, all good. Like, yeah. everyone loved it, even on the PS2, which um, which I honestly forgot that that was, like, Where how that released. came to be. Yeah. Um, because I, I just remember it being for the Wii. And I remember it being, in my mind, quietly popular for the Wii. Um, and so I always thought it was made for the Wii because of the brush controls. Right. And, like, that just makes so much sense. It I was does. like, wow, what a neat conceptualization for this platform. No, PS2 title, OG. Yep. And I'm like, what? But everything I could find on it was like, no, kind of a just a not super well-known but very popular game that just didn't do very – like I think as of last year, I think it's at like 4 million sales total, which is not a little amount, but it's also In been out for a while. Of things, yeah. That's, yeah, and I yeah. think that's across all releases. Wow. For, for Okami specifically. Yeah. Okami Den is much, much less, less. I think it was sub 200,000. Copies. Wow! Yeah, I think mean, like 2010 is like near the end of, not the end, but you're getting close to the end of the DS's life cycle. True. And like this you have was to, yeah something that I was thinking about uh, the other day, when the DS was nearing its end of its life cycle, a big competitor was like iPhone games yeah. or the iTouch, you know, whatever mm-hmm. it, you know. Mobile gaming was the competitor for a handheld. And to this day, there are some games I can look at on the handheld. I mean, on the phone. Yeah. Dragon Quest has some amazing ports. True. Um, there's there's a lot of old RPGs that have good ports. There's even some decent Grand Theft Auto ports. To yeah. It. But 2010, I don't know exactly, and I should have looked a list of like what mm. mobile gaming was available I can't imagine it came near. Fuck no, dude. I feel like... What, like, Okami didn't have to offer. I feel like you might have found... I don't remember what time something like Clash of Clans came out. Because I feel like... Or like a Candy Crush, right? Like, right. just as far as, like, really big, su- like, successful, popular games that are honestly kind of still around and, and doing some work and power to them. But, like, that was about as close as you were getting to something with a varietal amount of gameplay that was visually pleasing but also fun to play that you can engage with other people um which is maybe where candy crush starts to you know lose out on i don't know that there was a multi anything so you i mean it leads into another thought Hmm. of casual gamers and what that means what that used to mean and uh, compared to what it means now because a casual gamer to me now is someone who's like like you said candy crush uh, Farmville, they they play games on their phone. They might play Among Us. Sure, you know that's a casual kind of pick up and to me. pick up and put down like party yeah. style or. But you think yeah. pre-smartphone, casual gamer is still a term. Sure. So then you're talking about people who are, they have a DS, but they only play Cooking Mama and things like that. But you so you're dropping thirty bucks still. Sure. No, that's true. As a casual gamer. It's just a really funny, like, now when I think of a casual gamer, I don't consider someone who would spend money on video games. That's fair. Yeah, just getting those free games and watching ads yeah. kind of shit. Yeah. No, that's a good point. Um, also, a great segue into a conversation where I want to just absolutely shit on mobile games in its entirety. There, <sighs> Fuck, man. Let's hear it. I play, okay, so I play I play a pretty significant amount of mobile games. Um, I play a, a decent amount of I think like emulated stuff, um, just you know just straight up like app store shit. Um, I'm a big fan of like idle titles for mobile. I I don't like to sit and just like uh, like I'm not gonna try to sit down and play fucking Call of Duty or some like fuck that. Like PUBG. Dude. Okay, okay, but for real though, when I was going through my deep, dark depression, I did at one point download PUBG Mobile. 
And I just spent the entire afternoon just shitting on kids in Asia. Yeah, because it's way easier. Cause oh, like my fucking God, like dude. Person. It was unreal, dude. Um, I, I did that for like 10 straight hours, like just in the dark on my couch. And then I was like, well, that was an interesting Tuesday. I'm going, <laughs> I'm going back to bed. <laughs> um, well, I experienced that. <laughs> yeah. Well, that was cool. I literally, I think I installed it like the next day. I was I like, I, I don't need to do that again. Similar to that. Yeah. yeah. But like, no, if I want like a full on, and I hate the dis, like, I don't want to like, with my words, create a disparity between like what I would consider to be a gamer gamer maybe and like a casual gamer. Like you said, I don't disagree that there that is a distinction that shh, maybe doesn't have to be made, but no, can be but, made. I mean, it's just, yeah. But like, you know, because uh, like everybody pursue the things that make you happy. You know? like if Absolutely. That's, I don't that's believe in Tetris, guilty pleasures. Play the fuck out of Tetris. Yeah, yeah I don't, I'm not going to shit on you for that. I mean, I will, but I, I'm not, I don't want you to take that seriously and stop doing it or be, get angry because, you know, do you, butterfly. <laughs> but anyway, fuck those casual idiots. Uh, <laughs> real gamers, you know, yeah, using a keyboard gamers. and a mouse. Fuck all yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. Fucking PC Master Race. That's right. But I, I like some idle stuff because I don't want to sit at my computer. Like, I'm, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Like, I'm already sometimes embarrassed that I use a powerhouse like that for runescape i'm like but also like i would still build that machine just for runescape if that's all i played um because you know i might want to watch like 15 shows on netflix at the same time simultaneously so well you know uh, it's a really demanding game <laughs> it's a, dude, well okay would you use the uh, like the, the hd mod um in rune light the uh, what is that 117 hd os yeah yeah i know what you're talking about yeah that one it is not that for can that. slog not for it your, not for this thing. Machine, no, I can though. run like thirteen clients running that plugin. It'll be yeah. fine. But like, oh my shit, my old computer. Yeah, that one was like, computer, okay, like, yeah, well yeah, maybe yeah. close five or six Chrome tabs if you wouldn't mind. Yeah. <laughs> like, all right, that's fair. But yeah, no, I think you know. I almost wonder if the changes between Okami and Okami then were like intent. That's why, I was... or, or the like, the design behind it, or if it was more of like a we got to scale some shit down because of the you know the difference in platform specs, um, or maybe a combination of the two. Who fucking knows? We should interview one of the devs or that design so managers. Cool. If you worked on Okamiden, email us. At yeah, email us. Pocketcastpodcast at gmail dot com. We'd love to hear from you. We enjoyed your game. We did. I think the and here's the other thing you have to think about too with sales, especially by 2010, the R4 and piracy. That was big. The you should have sometime look up the article about Grand Theft Auto Chinatown Wars and how it sold on the DS. It is one of the like it did not sell well at all. It is was one it of the most pirated, pirated games oh ever. <laughs> Damn. Oh, ever, but on the DS, absolutely. In that time frame, yeah. guarantee it. I was definitely one of what those What a flattering people. insult, dude. Just like, well, your game's doing really well. Really Unfortunately, well. Unfortunately. You aren't making any you, yeah, money. Yeah, you're not making any money. No. Ah, uh, yeah, that would, that would suck, yeah. dude. I would be. And also, though, they had to know. People had to know when they're putting R4, like when they're putting games out at this time, that the R4 is out there. I mean, Dragon Quest games are hard to pirate. They were very good. Uh, they were very aware of what was happening. Isn't um, Dragon uh, Quest is uh, um, God, who does Square Enix? Square Enix, thank you. Yeah, that, I feel like Square Enix has always been pretty on top of piracy. Yeah, a lot of Nintendo has been pretty on top of it, and maybe it just costs more money to be able to do that. You know, because I guess when you see those third-party companies that have more issues with it. Don't eat my tax forms, idiot. Yeah, I'll spur you again. Anyway, sorry. Square Enix and Nintendo and their anti-piracy. Yeah, they do. A, <laughs> they do a great job of it. But then you see third party don't do. They don't. They're not so good at being, having anti-piracy. So that must be a, a financial thing. It would be my assumption. I mean, I don't know enough about it, but like, I would have to imagine at the very least, it's incorporating and maintaining some kind of secure encryption, something or other that wraps around your your game files. Um, like, uh, not that not that I pirate things at all, but if you know, 
perhaps maybe I spent a couple hours investigating a way to remove the encryption around Amazon's proprietary ebook files um, so that I could load them onto a non-approved device for e-reading. Um, and they just they just updated their encryption package. Oh, um, did they? Yeah. So oh, it's I was going to say, because I used to... Um, look, I, at, look at what that might into be that. involved yeah. with as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, just because I was curious. I was like, well, I hope Amazon's really keeping up with their... You know, anti piracy. You know, well, stuff, yeah, you want comic book creators to be getting paid, so you had to make sure that. For sure, for sure. Yeah, yeah, those guys need to be making their bread. Absolutely. Yeah, um, and I'm, by God, I'm helping them put their bread on the table. Yep. Yes, securing sir. their securing their security. Yes, that's us. You po- don't do it. Who's going to do it? <laughs> <laughs> we do, we do security for comic book artists. That's right. Yeah, that's that's right. That's our that's our day job. So, I don't know, man. Not a bust. I enjoyed Okami Den. It, it's a Seemed fun like title. like a great time. I wish I could have played it. Yeah. it's uh, And I, I would have loved to have gotten farther in it because I can only imagine what, what else they would do. Probably a lot of similarities again with Okami, but still. And Zelda. And Zelda, as we have also established. Yeah. But good nonetheless. Uh, maybe uh, maybe I'll come back to it periodically here and there. Maybe probably not. But, you know, hey, good yeah. game. Good game. It well was, done, guys. Yeah. We have already spun the wheel, as we have once once before said. This is a re-recording. Uh, we're already a week into play in this game. And I'm absolutely loving it. Yeah, I can't. I honestly can't wait for the next episode. Like, I'm, I'm pretty stoked to talk yeah, about it. Yeah, it was very hard to talk about Okami Din. <laughs> with all like of I this just, in the back of dude, my head, I just stopped like, myself oh, so many dude, times. Dude, yes. Uh, like I feel like I'm not even talking. Like I'm trying not to text you. So things that like I keep coming across. In I the know. Game, dude. Be like, oh, I love this thing. Um, did we already? Did we already announce it, or did no. I just say that we've been Chrono Trigger? Boom. Yeah. Fucking. Not the game I thought it was. No, once again. <laughs> I think I'm gonna throw that in after this. I'm probably gonna throw in the ending of the rest of the episode. Just to catch you. Oh, me talking about what yeah, I thought it was. Or maybe we'll just finish no, it out yeah. at the end. I just, I just love you being like, yeah, I know what that is. And then after, and we didn't record it though. But afterwards, you had no idea. Oh, no idea, what it dude. Was. I thought it was. I thought Chrono Trigger was one of those like shmups, right? You think it was oh, like, like a, a shoot 'em up? Like, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Shmup. I keep forgetting that term. Yeah. Um. Yeah, like a two D platforming shmup. That's what I thought it was. Kind of like um. Oh god, what's the one? With, it's the dudes in the Vietnam jungles. Uh, like, metal slug. Yeah, like metal. Yeah, metal slug. Right. Yeah. 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 In fact, I think that's exactly what I was thinking of. Probably. Maybe. Maybe. Either way, that's not what this is at it all. Isn't. Um. And I will reserve my opinion yeah. for it until can't, the can't next Can't wait episode. to talk to you about it next week. Yeah, I might have hated it. Yeah. Know. All right. See you later, gamers. <laughs>